Matthew Doyle here again, continuing with video 3 of our GFX 3.1 HUDKit overview. In this third video, we'll discuss the main functions for updating the HUD as found in the FX HUD view C++ file. So let's have a quick look at the main HUD update file. The initialization of FX HUD view takes place in its constructor, which is fired off once when the simulation begins. The constructor is passed the pointer to the HUDKit.swift movie that was sent to C++ using the external interface call in HUDKit. At the core of the new complex object API is the GFX value class, which can be used to store references to flash objects. This class provides a number of accessors and mutators for manipulating movie clips, which will look familiar to anyone with a rudimentary knowledge of ActionScript. Its methods include getMember, set text, set display info, set scale, go to and play, and go to and stop. FX HUD view caches references to the core movie clips it uses to update the HUD. By caching the movie clips this way, the HUD kit improves performance greatly as we avoid retrieving movie clips on every update. As an example, we can see here that we first cache a reference to the Team Stats movie clip in Flash at Team Stats MC using GFX values get member function. From there, we can use Team Stats MC to cache references to the sub elements of the Team Stats UI, such as score red, team red, etc. The next two functions are used to register and initialize the minimap object and to toggle visibility of the minimap's controls. The update view function contains the logic for updating the HUD each tick of the game. Inside this function you can see that we call several other functions, which will update each main UI element and its sub-elements. To avoid updating HUD elements which have not changed, we first store the states of the game data using the update state function here. Next we have individual update functions for each major UI element. For example, update team stats is used to update the individual pieces of the team stats movie clip. To avoid updating a piece of the team stats movie clip that hasn't changed, we first check to see if the related game data has changed since we last updated the UI element. In this case, we test to see if score red is different than state.score red. If it is, then we update the text field score red MC and the progress bar team red MC to the new value stored in score red. This process is repeated for each individual UI element, first testing to see if there was a change, then updating that element only if necessary. The last function we'll talk about is the on event function. This is a handler which is used to listen for specific events when the player is shot, when the player is on a kill streak, when the player is killed, or when the player shoots his weapon. In the case of player damage from being shot, the code determines which direction the player was shot from and plays the appropriate animation of the directional damage movie clip in Flash. As an example, if the player was shot from behind, we fire the bottom directional hit indicator with the line dirmc underscore b dot go to and play on. First we have the cached movie clip reference followed by the dot operator followed by the GFX value method go to and play. We use the label on to tell it where to start playing the animation on the flash timeline. This corresponds to a keyframe in flash with the label on. The animation fades out on its own without the necessity of making a C++ call to initiate another animation. We use the same basic method for the other events such as the killstreak indicator. In the case of a text field in flash we use the movie clip reference name followed by the dot operator, then the action script command set text. This concludes the basic overview of the GFX 3.1 HUD kit. The HUD kit is highly customizable and we encourage you to play around with it to see what can be done and how you might achieve it. Full documentation is provided with the kit and can be accessed via the Scaleform SDK browser.